Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm from Tan Tock Seng Hospital, and I'm an orthopedic consultant. And I, uh, my specialty is actually knee replacement and hip replacement. So today we'll talk about whether which patients will benefit from a knee replacement surgery. Uh, okay, so I've done all my training in Singapore. Uh, I've been working in uh, Tan Tock Seng ever since uh, I graduate. Um, and I'm also fortunate enough that I had take a scholarship from the MOH that I can go to uh, Germany, Hamburg, to learn their um, uh, latest techniques in the knee replacement. Um, so I finished my training in about 2014, have been working in Tan Tock Seng after that. So actually in uh, elderly, um, it's very, very common. A lot of the patients will ask, why I got knee pain, I got back pain, I got shoulder pain, I sometimes even say they long jong tia, everywhere I got pain. Uh, they wonder whether it's due to the wind in the body or they drank too much water because they believe that wind and water are the ones that are causing the pain. Or is it because of my aircon is too cold? But actually most of the time it's because of wear and tear. I mean, humans are like cars. At one certain time, there will be wear and tear in the joints. Um, so. Um, but of course, we have um, um, we have ways to tackle that. Um, a lot of patients will say, "Oh, wear and tear is an old man, old people problem. Never mind, I live with it." But then they are so restricted by it. So we we rather to help you all to achieve a golden age rather than uh, it's supposed to be beautiful, not painful. And we want to be empowered, uh, you all, rather than being overpowered by the disease itself. Okay, so this is a. Uh, uh, picture of the damaged cartilage. You can see that all the cartilage is actually worn out. It's like a car, the tire has just been worn out. So you can see that it's definitely painful. Um, so arthritis actually just means wear and tear of the joint. Um, in fact, it's very, very common and not just in uh, Singapore itself. Worldwide, there's actually almost 40% of the people are actually more than 40, 70 years old. And actually, they say that almost 14.8 million um, disability adjusted life years are lost. People are just so painful, they couldn't do their normal work. In Singapore, expect that about 25%, maybe more than 60, 60 years old by 2030. And actually, I would say 90% of the patients are actually suffering from uh, osteoarthritis of the knee joint. So this is a classical picture. Um, a lot of the this is arthritis of the hand, which is usually not too bad uh, because we don't need a hand to walk. Uh, but this is very very classical. A lot of the elderly will have this kind of hands appearance. So all these are due to the arthritis degeneration of the joint. So knee joint is the most commonly affected joint in the lower limb in Asia. Um, I would say the ratio is almost ten to one. Every ten patients have arthritis in the legs. Nine, nine of them are from the knee joint and ladies are especially affected by, um, by knee arthritis. Every 10 patients go for a, a knee replacement, nine of them are females. So basically arthritis just means that the, the repair mechanism in the body is unable to cope with the wear and tear anymore. So you can see a picture, this is a brand new knee joint in a young healthy patient. But this is the knee joint in an elderly patient after the cleaning up surgery. But you can see that this is never the same as the other side. So a few symptoms. Um, patient will have pain. They will have stiffness. They cannot bend. They cannot straighten further. They cannot straighten fully. They cannot bend fully. They will happen to notice that their, sh their legs are a little bit deformed. They have O-shaped legs. Um, some of them even bent outside the other way. So they feel that their knee is locked, they jammed, and they have a lot of sound. Sometimes they can, if you put your hand over the sh uh, in the knee joint, you can just move and see whether there's any um, clicking sound. Some of them is so loud that you can actually can hear. Um, they have a lot of problem walking downstairs. They have to use the trick movement to like turn around or walk sideways. Um, they can't squat anymore. And a lot of them cannot even, they have to use their hand to push themselves up from a seated position. And of course, sometimes it's so painful that they cannot even sleep properly. The moment they turn, they feel pain in the knee joint. And this is, the, this is a normal picture. You can see that the knee is straight. But you can see that in this patient, he has a bit of a bow leg. And this patient has a deformity. The leg is bending outwards. 
So this is also classic. I'm sure if you go to the market, you will see a lot of the patient having this kind of knee joint. So this is the x-ray finding. You can see that the leg is bowing inwards. Um, you can see that there's a O shape in the knee joint. So these are the x-ray findings. So you can see that the, the knee is bent. There's a lot of like, loose bodies in the, in the, in the joint. Um, there's a lot of osteophytes and you can see that the joint here, there's almost no space. Black color is the cartilage in the x-ray. You can see that there's almost none. So a few things that we can prevent, of course. Um, of course, if you are too big, you should try to lose a little bit of weight. Try not to carry too heavy loads. Um, avoid walking for prolonged distance. If possible, don't use uh, stairs as a training and things like that. And squatting itself is a very bad, it, it put a lot of pressure in the knee joint. That's why it's actually uh, not very recommended for a patient with a knee problem. Of course, if you can happen, avoid injury. Um, and actually, uh, if you really have a lot of knee problems, sometimes don't be afraid, don't be shy to use a walking stick. Actually, it helps. Uh, a lot of patients will ask whether knee guards is useful. I think in the short term, knee guards is useful to protect the joint, but in the long term, it makes the muscles even weaker. So in the long run, it's not a good idea. So a few treatments. Uh, I'm a surgeon. Of course, uh, we do surgery, but I will say that it's reserved to the last... Um, reserved to the, as a last resort, okay? So I think Dr. Yap just also mentioned, glucosamine um, can actually help to regenerate a little bit of the knee joint, but the effect is usually very, very small. Um, painkiller, um, simple painkiller like Panadol, um, or the stronger painkiller like Tramadol, will help to take away the pain. Um, and the stronger painkiller will be like the NSAIDs, um, those uh, will take away the pain very effectively, but the problem is that once you stop, once the effect stops, the pain comes back. So uh, at the same time, we don't want you to be reliant on the painkiller every day. Um, there's also injection available. Uh, there are two types of injection. One is a steroids injection. Uh, in general, we don't recommend uh, very much because in the long term, it causes some problem to the knee joint. Um, there's also an uh, oil lubrication injection that is available, uh, but usually it's reserved to the very early arthritis patient. When the knee is significantly deformed, uh, it doesn't work very well. And this is also not very cheap. It's almost $400 uh, for one injection. And sometimes it lasts maybe just three months at maximum. So if we d we will, the doctors will decide with you how bad is your arthritis and how uh, how's your symptoms, then we will recommend the various mode of treatment. Um, so if let's say you are relatively younger, maybe at the 50s, uh, if your knee arthritis is not very bad, or sometimes you have um, a minor accident, you suddenly, you bought the butts at the wrong, wrong way, or you come down the wrong way, you might have some what called meniscus damage. Then sometimes an arthroscopy, a keyhole surgery in cleaning up, might, help, might be helpful, but in the end, it does not 100% reverse the problem because the, the knee joint, no matter how I clean up, how I wash for you, it will never be the same like when you were 16 years old. Uh, so sometimes when the damage is so bad, imagine this car tire is all damaged. It's just like our knee joint is all damaged. Sometimes you have no choice but to change a new one. Okay, so we, I'm a surgeon, so I, this is my specialty. I always do knee replacement. I think this year, uh, I've done about 300 plus knee replacement already. Um, so um, when the joint is really beyond repair, beyond the medication, then you have to rely on a knee replacement. There's two types of knee replacement. There's one called partial knee replacement that we can just change half the knee joint. It's a smaller surgery and faster recovery, but of course, it depends on the damage. If it's damage is too severe, you can't just change half the knee joint. And this is a complete total knee replacement. So only uh, in knee replacement, we consider a real cure in an uh, arthritis patient. So it replaces the damaged cartilage, it realigns the leg, the leg will be straightened, and you can allow the patient to rehabilitate. And if it's done nicely and you will take care of the knee joint, it can last at least 10 to 15 years, which um, 
which is a uh, only the long only long lasting solution that's available. So this is how a total knee replacement looks like. So the metal joint would will, will be replaced all the damaged cartilage. The damaged cartilage in the in the tibia bone and the leg bone will also be replaced by metal. And then the a special form of plastics will become a new cartilage for you. So there are some examples. This patient has very bad knee joint. You can see the leg is bow leg terribly and has a lot of osteophytes, has a lot of um, damage in the knee joint. So she's not available for doing partial knee or I don't think any of the medication will be able to help her. So this is how she looks like. It's finally now the legs are straight uh, after replacement. And this patient is even more severe. You can see that the knee joint, half of it even come out of the space. If the joint is in the sublux, the whole tibia, the whole bone is damaged. She's on wheelchair, she can't even stand up to brush her teeth. Um, uh, after that, the both legs are straight. This is not magic, this is surgery. Okay, so this is a less um, severe case. So you can see that again, the cartilage here is all damaged. You can see that we can replace it very nicely. Um, again, this patient, he has a, the other deformity. The leg is banging outwards. You can see that the cartilage is all gone. The bone is rubbing on the bone. And after the surgery, you can see that it's all straightened. She is quite unfortunate. She has a previous uh, surgery done in a, for the broken bone. So we also managed to do a, a knee replacement for her without any much trouble. So I would say that now the technology of knee replacement has been very, very advanced. Uh, when when uh, people are talking about, uh, I'm, I want to travel to the space for a holiday, that kind of thing, uh, knee replacement is no longer a dream. It's already so, it's been around for 30 years. The technology has evolved very much. Now, in fact, um, Tan Tok Seng is one of the places that we do a lot of uh, computer um, navigated surgery. Um, so basically, it's like whether you trust your own eyes or we now use computer technology to help us to achieve the, the better alignment. So this is how we do surgery like 20 years ago. We use a lot of um, visual guide inside the old um, uh, car workshop. Uh, Sifu will say, oh, I will, I will just align your uh, tire for you, no problem. He just used a lot of his eyes to see, but if let's say that day she never drink coffee or, or he didn't have enough sleep, uh, he might be off. Okay, but I think the computer will be better. You can see that the computer, every, all the data will be transmitted to the computer and actually will tell you exactly how much is your angle, how much is the degree. Uh, you can see we can be very, very accurate. Now everything is computerized. You can see exactly this patient before surgery is actually 20 degrees of uh, male alignment. And after surgery, you can see that it's straight, zero degree. So it's also been proven that, um, that the computer actually is more accurate than human eyes. Um, you can see that in this study, you can see that the normal knee, um, there's almost 30% of slight malalignment. But in computer navigator surgery, it's only about 10%. Of course, even computer may not be 100% right all the time, but it's still better than human eyes. And, um, and, and computer technology will be very useful for a very, very complex uh, injury. You can see this patient. He has a f multiple fracture. He has a fracture at the ankle, he has a fracture in the thigh bone, and then the leg is completely um, crooked in a sense. Okay, so we use a computer navigation surgery for her to guide our surgery. You can see that the leg is now very straight. Um, so basically, now I think the goalpost, the technology and the era has changed. Who has this handphone now? We will have a special prize for you. Nobody. Okay, so everybody has this now. Okay, so we believe that as time goes by, uh, we should embrace the technology rather than, uh, rather than just rely on the old way. Say, oh, uh, this this surgeon has been doing surgery for the last fifty years. We should just continue to do it for the next fifty years. So we should embrace the technology to help us to achieve faster recovery and a better alignment. Um, 
So now even um, so this is even better now. So the 3D printing technology has also been uh, into the medical field, and now we can even do a scan and we can actually look at how big is your knee, how bad is your malalignment, and we can plan for the surgery and print out a special mold just for you. So this is a 3D printed technology. Uh, once it's printed, it's only for you. Uh, even people rob you for this, he can't use it for you. He can't use it for himself. Only it fits you. Okay, so this one helped me to plan your surgery faster, to plan the surgery more accurate. And you have less blood loss and you have a faster recovery. Faster recovery. So we have been actually doing this since 2010, and Tanosing is the one. It's actually the most. Uh, we did the most number of such technology in Singapore. Um, so in summary. If the knee joint is uh, put in correctly and, is, uh, and you take care of the knee joint or the new replacement knee joint, it can last easily 10 to 15 years. And I will say the success rate is over 95%. Um, it's much quicker procedure as compared to 20 years ago. Now it's much less blood loss and the surgical time has also been shortened. And the overall, the performance of a knee replacement has been much better than as compared to 20 years ago. So, um, so when would you actually need a knee joint, a knee replacement? So when there's actually significant malalignment, you can see that this building slowly it will just continue to, to fall downwards. Once you have the uh, malalignment, it's actually a vicious cycle because when your knee is crooked, more pressure is on the crooked side and more pain is going to generate and it wears out the joint even faster. So, there's no way that you can break out. It's like a chair that has a, there's a leak that is crooked. The moment you sit down, it will, it will, it will be lopsided on towards the other side. And or if the pain is so painful, it's so intractable, every time, if you need to take painkiller every day to get out to maybe just one bowl to buy, buy your lunch, to do your shopping, then you should actually consider painkiller, uh, uh, then you should consider doing a knee replacement surgery. We have patients who took in so much painkiller that actually damaged the, the kidney, it damaged the, the, uh, the stomach. So this is not worth it. Um, or when your daily activity is so restricted, you used to be able to go for shopping, you can play with your grandchildren, and now you can only uh, go to your block or go to the void deck and you can't do anything else. And, and, and not to say that you want to do a bit of traveling with your com uh, family or your friends. You can't do it anymore because of the knee pain. When people are going out to shopping, you can only stay in the hotel room to, to wait. That is, uh, to us, is actually not so desirable. Um, so it's the choice is yours, whether you want to be active or you want to become a couch potato, continue to sit at the home and, and wait. Um, we want you all to achieve a golden age, you be act still become active, it's, it's supposed to be beautiful. We want you to enjoy your family time with your grandchildren and not to be um, restricted by just a simple problem in the knee joint. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Henry Chan. I have a few questions to ask you. Uh. Sure. Firstly, what is the cost of the re knee joint replacement? Uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, can we resume your, our activities with intensity after the knee, knee joint replacement? Then the other, last question I want to ask is, uh, what care must we look for after the knee joint replacement? Okay, so the cost in the knee joint replacement mainly is covered by if you're a subsidized patient uh, under a Singaporean and under subsidized care, it's pretty standard. Uh, all the data is actually in the, in the internet, in the MOH webpage. Uh, the only cost component that, that, that you need to pay off is actually for the, for the metal implant itself. But of course, there's still subsidy from the government as well. Uh, I think the MediLife Shield, uh, government is trying to push through and eventually, hopefully, uh, government will be able to provide even more subsidy for the knee replacement. Um, after knee replacement, uh, you will be able to do most things, uh, going upstairs, going downstairs, walking without any problem. Uh, of course, we don't expect you to, but in the, you can still do some high impact, high impact stuff are not 
recommended because actually it, it, it wears out the joint faster. So we don't expect you to start running marathon or, or, or playing uh, basketball, this kind of a lot of jumping uh, and a lot of high impact sports. But otherwise, uh, brisk walking, tai chi, swimming, cycling, not an issue at all. Um, and for the, uh, in a sense, how to take care is that you um, try not to fall down, try to keep your muscles strong and don't, don't get too big size. Uh, these are the few things that you can do to take care of the replacement knee joint. Okay, due to time limit, we only limit to one more question. Uh, hi, uh, doctor. Earlier on, you mentioned about uh, not to have prolonged walking. Yes. Um, that is when how you judge your own condition. And um, the other thing is, um, oh yeah. Probably you answer this question first. Okay, so um, okay, prolonged walking, we are talking about maybe hours, talking about maybe four hours, five hours, or you want to walk from uh, uh, Wampo all the way to uh, Jurong, that kind is considered prolonged walking, okay? But in normal activities, like let's say you go to the pasar, have a cup of tea with your, have a cup of coffee with your friend, and go to the shopping mall a little bit, and come back home, this is not considered prolonged walking. So I would say maybe 30 minutes to one hour will be, will be good, uh, but not anything excessively. But again, it's a bit of chicken and egg. I know on one way, we want you to keep fit, to keep, um, uh, to keep yourself, the muscles strong, uh, to do more exercise. But if the knee is so painful, you can't do all these things. So it's a bit of chicken and egg. If you cannot do, so sometimes you may need some help from the doctors, like maybe an injection or sometimes if worse come to worse, a knee replacement surgery, then you can achieve something. Okay, thanks. And then the other thing, right, is like uh, when you talk about the knee joint deformed. Yes. Um, what about, and what I see from the picture is more on like the, up, the upward deformed, right? What about the inward De deform is uh, what is the concern? Actually, once the leg is not straight, uh, is is uh, problematic. It can be it can bow outside or it can bow inwards. But in Asian, because of our body, our genes, most of the time, I would say maybe ninety percent of the time, the 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 leg tends to bow inwards. Uh, it's not so common for the knee joint to bow outwards. Uh. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, so most of the patient, the knee joint bow inwards. I'll say 90% of the time. Uh, rarely, sometimes the knee bow away, but as long as the leg is not straight, it's like a building that's not straight, then you, you just, it's I mean, it's, it's going to progress further. Because if you can imagine, if she starts standing, all the pressure is on this side. So this side will be more worn out, more damaged, and you become more crooked. It's like the building that I showed you just now. Or like this patient. Hmm? Not working. Oh, maybe the reception not very good. Or like this patient, you can imagine the moment he stand, his all the pressure is going to be here. Or it's like a chair that is, has a leg that is not straight. The moment you sit down, the chair will lopsided. So it's just going to create worse and worse. Yeah, so this is not so common, but still, uh, we, can, we can do something to help you. But this one, once you become this kind of malalignment, there's no medicine or injection that can help you. Or this special shoe in the market is not going to help you with that. Yeah. We will, we will take one, one last okay. uh, Hi, uh, uh, Sorry. Sorry. Dr. Henry, right? Yes you, We did, uh, the gentleman over there asked you how much is the cost? We don't, I mean, you um, just estimate roughly 5,000 and above? Uh, no, I think in subsidized care, the cash component is maybe just 2,000 plus, 2,000, 3,000 uh, of course, MediSafe, all this, they will deduct from uh, yourself. Uh, I mean, the MediSafe is, uh, will be deducted, but the cash component is only about two, two three thousand dollars in, in subsidized care. Yeah. Which is uh, one-tenth of the cost in a private practice. 
private hospitals. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, okay oh. we'll take one last oh, okay, question okay. very quick. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Dr. Chan, if a person is allergic to the material like nickel, uh, is it still a suitable patient for that? Okay, uh, in, in Asia, we have uh, not so much of nickel allergy, but of course, if you have nickel allergy problem that's been proven, we have actually ma others material like ceramic joint that is possible to encounter this. So, um, yeah, a ceramic joint will be a, a good alternative for the traditional standard metal implants. But if it's a, what is a lifespan? Because just now you mentioned 10 to 15 years, yes. right? The, how about ceramic joints? It's actually, put, it's actually even longer. The, the ceramic implant is uh, harder, smoother, stronger. So potentially you can push it to 15 to 20 years. Potentially, so even longer lasting. Is it lasting. subsidized or not? Uh, there's still some subsidy from the government. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, the, um, thank you very Dr. much. Chan for the insights on total knee replacement.